I figured I'd tell you guys some more of the story about Earl Scheib and uh, what it was like working there. And, you know, the other thing I remembered and I forgot to tell you guys in the last video was there was a body man there. And so I was the painter and he was the body man. And what I have to do is kind of paint the picture of this guy. So he's in a Dodge flat nose van. Back then they weren't really popular. And he just had, you know, he had his double doors open. And that's where his tools were. He wouldn't leave them in the shop because he was worried about them getting stolen at night. And really, honestly, there wasn't anything in his toolbox to steal. What a ball peen hammer and a crowbar. Pretty much, he didn't have any body tools. All he had was just, you know, a, a two by four, you know, um, you know, a few things like that. It was just comedy, you know, what he used to fix stuff. So, but he did have a good, he had a slide hammer. Let me show you what it was like. So this was the body man's tool of choice. Anything that would come into the place, even if he could get to the inside of it, this was his go-to for anything, which I never use this tool because um, there's just too many others that work so much better. But <clears throat> I still have it just because for the hell of it, you know, just something I had. Some people give them to me. And they go, oh, I got a dent puller, so you can have this one. So anyway, this was his tool of choice for pretty much anything. So, uh, let, let me give you a little more view of what this guy was like. Basically, he had a lot of tattoos. He had hair down to his to the middle of his back. He didn't say much because probably he just got done doing time. So, pretty much this guy was like a prison body man. And that was his job. It was to fix your car. And, it, I mean... Literally people, and I think honestly, the, the, the customers that came that got dents fixed by Earl Scheib were pretty much drunks or, you know, people that had a drinking problem and they would get in an accident and they wanted to fix it real quick before anybody knew that they wrecked some guy's car on the side of the road. So <laughs> this guy would do the number on it, man. So here's what he would do. So I remember seeing a car with, and the reason I'm showing this, truck is this is going to get all fixed pretty soon but <clears throat> had a big dent in the door really big dent in the door in this car and the fender was hit you know bubbled in too so it was like it hit something twice and <clears throat> and i walk up to the car and i go wow uh, you're gonna fix that and he goes yep that was it he wouldn't say anything you know his answer was always a one word answer yep what'd you get for that 200 I'm like wow 200 bucks i mean i was doing body work at my house and i would get like you know 150 and that would be painting it and everything back when i was young and i was all excited that i was making 150 dollars <clears throat> and here's this guy you know you getting 200 bucks and he's gonna just totally mickey mouse this thing so first thing he'd do is he'd get his punch out and he'd just punch a bunch of holes in it you know various holes and then he'd just grab his slide hammer, screw it into it, and then he'd pull it, pull it out, bam, bam. And then you'd see this wham, and then it just the hole was just this big, giant hole sitting there, and you're going, oh, my God. You know, I was just watching this guy. I mean, literally, I'm kind of like masking off my car, but I'm looking over the top of it, and I'm watching this guy do this, and I'm like, holy crap, did he just do that? He just pulled a giant hole in this, in this metal and then I go, whoa, what's he going to do next, you know? So this guy's, then he drills, you know, puts the thing in again, bam, 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 and he pulls another hole out, you know? <laughs> so about the third or fourth hole, I'm going, whoa, this is, a, this is wild, man. This guy is going to, that's how he fixes his tits. So then he just grabs his trowel, you know, and this, you got to imagine this guy with his tattoos all over him, his hair's down to the back of the middle of his back, and he just kind of stands there, you know. He didn't, like, bend over and get into his work or anything. He just kind of stands almost straight up, and he's just kind of just troweling the bond on, like, like it's like, well, I'm not, I, don't, I don't feel like doing this, you know. Like, he's just troweling the bond on, and you're just going, wow. 
And he takes a sander, a DA sander, lets it dry, and he takes a DA sander with 80 grit and sands it down. And, uh, and I mean, literally, I mean, I guess the dent was still, you know, it was, it was, you know, it, it wasn't stuck in, but it was still, you know, the body lines were all totally off. I mean, you could still see all the waves and everything in it when you're all done. And it was like the people would just pay. They just came in and they would just pay the bill. So it was just, I, I was just fascinated with this place. Earl Scheib was, was comedy. It was absolute comedy. It was the funnest job I had. and I'd never forget the place because it was so much fun. Every time I went to work, I'd go, I wonder what I'm going to run into today. What's this guy going to do next? You know, he, you know, bend bumpers straight and, you know, he'd go, well, that's as straight as they can get it. And then they tell the manager, oh, that's fine. That's, that's, oh, I can sell that. That's, and it was just like, you know, just like you might, you might as well just push it back in by hand. Um, you know, there was just crazy stuff. And, and another thing that would happen there is uh, every once in a while, a guy would, you know, complain enough where the manager would go, hey, no, no problem. Just pay the bill and we'll do a no charge on it next week. So it was called a no charge. Whenever a car came back, that thing had a, a label on it, no charge. You know, it was like, that's a no charge. So that meant you spend no time to fix it. And um, because it, you, you couldn't re recoat the paint that we used because it didn't have any hardener in it. And it was this sort of cheap enamel. And if you recoated it right away, it would wrinkle. So, <clears throat> so they bring the car back the next week. And I remember the last guy who worked there before me had some no charges. And so I'm sure I had some no charges. I mean, no, no doubt. <laughs> some stuff I'm sure didn't make it. I mean, I was just like, oh, my God, that's terrible. You know, and. The guy, you know, I'd hear him out there, you know, while I'm working, you know, I'd come out of the booth to go, you know, get something, go back into the spray booth, and I'd hear the guy arguing with the manager, and the, and the right manager would just, like, hammer these people, you know, it's just great. He's just in there just, no, no, you pay, you pay right here, that's it, no, that's what you get. You know, he'd be just, like, on him. And so, so, like, the guy, well, and then the guy, and then he'd tell me, oh, we got a no charge, we got a no charge. Like, okay, so, he'd bring this no charge in the thing, he goes, and I go, well, you know, so like, it'd be like a spot where the paint didn't cover or something, you know, or maybe it was a run or something, you know, whatever. And I go, so, so what do we have to fix this to the manager? And he's like, well, you know, you got paint. And I'm like, well, what about, um, uh, do we have any blending reducer? Oh, no. Do we have anything to, you know, make, you know, for I can spot paint this and make it look better? And he goes, oh, no, no. And I go, well, what do I do? He says, just put a little paint on there and that's it. I go, okay. So I just, I just like throw a little paint on there and just leave the, the big fat, you know, like blending areas. And then I, maybe I take a little bit of reducer, you know, I had like some kind of, that was like lacquer thinner. I think all they had, they didn't have reducer. I think all they had was lacquer thinner. Try and take some lacquer thinner and, and kind of blend it out a little bit. And it, you can just obviously see this giant touch-up, you know. <laughs> and we take it outside. He push, take it out of the booth, just push it out there. And the guy goes, oh. And, and the manager would go, huh, that's all we can do. And the guy would just, you know, they would just cave. They just realized they weren't getting anywhere. <laughs> they just cave and drive their car away. And, you know, here's this giant, this touch-up that looked like just garbage. I mean, it looked worse than it did before I did the touch-up. And, and uh, you know, and that was called a no charge. So whenever things, you know, and so, hey, we got a no charge. And he would say it really loud so that the customer would hear, so that everybody would hear there's a no charge. That meant we don't do much to this one, you know. And, and it was just like this announcement, you know, would go, hey, we got a no charge. We got to get a better. Get a gun, really get done real quick, no charge. And uh, you go in and just do this, spend no time, just there you go. And then the guy go, well, uh, he doesn't really look much better. Well, I'm sorry, that's the best we can do. If you wanted a good job, you should have went over up the street to to uh, to uh, to the good shop and you would have paid $1,000. And the guy's like, okay, I guess that's all I get. He'd walk away. So... Those are some of the other funny things that happen. 
the body man was just comical, dude. It was just like everything I'd go over and say to him, it was a one word answer. He was like, So, what'd you get for that? 200. And he had a real raspy voice. 200. I'm like, yeah. Oh, so, so how are you going to fix that? One of these things. And I go, You're not going to take the bottle panel off? You're not going not to gonna take the door panel off? Nope. You know, are you gonna? Uh, how are you gonna get the fender pushed out in the front? Right there. That's what he did. <laughs> it was just one one word answer. Right there. Oh, okay, cool, cool. All right, I'll be over working over here. And I just go back to work and and just watch the guy over the over the top of the hood and just uh, it was just comedy. The guy was just it was hilarious. It was like a circus. You know, it was really. And literally, the people that work there, if you ever go to a circus, all these weird people, you know, and there's this guy, you know, everybody looks scary, you know, like the guy who's like, who's, who's like, you know, doing the things, whatever, you kind of look at the guy, and you're like, well, that guy's kind of scary. It's like, everybody was there was scary like that, except for the manager, he was kind of normal, he just didn't look like he made a lot of money. But everybody was, everybody looked really scary. Even the, even the, the Hispanic guy that worked doing the stuff, I was kind of scared of him. So I didn't really want to tell him what to do. And uh, same with the body man. And, and then the other thing that was really weird was when the owner came over and he was in his, the, he comes over and it's like the mafia owns Earl Scheib, right? You know, that's what it was pretty much. I don't know how it worked out, but it was drug fronters. Who knows for something. Um, so, the guy comes over and he's in a Cadillac, you know, and the, and the guy was outside and, he, you know, his driver's out there and he's got a big bulge and you're like, holy crap, man, what's going on? He's black suit, black Cadillac with a, you know, stretch limo and the guy's sitting in the back and, and the manager goes, hey, hey, I want you to meet this guy. I want you to meet this guy. I'm like, really? <laughs> okay. So I walk over and I'm kind of like kind of scared, you know, I kind of walk over and he goes, hey. How you doing? You know, he's an Italian guy. You know, how you doing? Oh, good. I'm glad you're taking care of me here. You know, I'm going, yeah, and if I don't take care of me, you're going to come after me and kill me. <laughs> so I know that's okay. You know, I'm just like, that's what I'm thinking in my head. But I'm just going, oh, my God. You know, I didn't really want to work there very long because of that, you know. But, um, you know, other than that, it was a blast. I had so much fun. That was really, you know. Who can get paid and do crap? I mean, where do you go to get paid and ruin stuff? It was just like, I wanted to be the body man. I really did. I wanted to be the body man so I could go over there and just ruin stuff and go, yes, I got paid for that. Yeah, you know, that's what I wanted to do. But I didn't, you know, I wasn't able to be the body man. I didn't have a connection, drug connection through the mafia. So um, I wasn't getting it. Or a prison sentence, you know that I just got out of, so I probably wasn't going to make it. But, yeah, pretty much, you know, uh, Earl Scheib hired, you know, fresh. They were into, you know, recovering people. And, well, some of them, you know, the painter there, who, when he came back to work, he definitely was not recovered. So he, he was still on heroin probably and meth. You know, he was, like, talking really fast, but then he'd go really, really slow at the same time. So it was really weird. Anyway, uh, that's the Earl Scheib story. Um, that's pretty much all I have on that. So um, I just thought I'd just tell you guys a little more about the body man and the no charge. I just remembered that, so I wanted to say it. Talk to you in the next video.